Welcome. What is up? Welcome to This Week in the Mixer, episode 2.19, I believe. Week? What week are we on? Week 4? Recap? We're at the quarter pool for the season. Uh, how, you got, how, how are you guys doing? How's your, how are your teams doing? Mine? Not so great. It's an off year. I am about, I think I'm at 500 um, throughout my throughout all my teams I got one team that's three and one our dynasty league uh, in a rebuilding year so that that one's that one's pretty nice um, we'll see I don't have really the depth that I would like uh, so we'll have to see if that lasts over the course of the season 500 in the mixer which is um, a, a disappointment it's probably better than better than my team has been playing to um, to be at 500. Unfortunately, I got a, I got my bye week early playing Jess, and in my big cash league, uh, my only other league, I'm one in three, and that team is. I, I mean, I feel like I'm the most confident about, uh, but as you can tell the tone of my voice, you may be able to gauge my overall confidence with any of my teams. Um, I mean, I have, I, I'm kind of like, I have Rivers and Josh Allen, so I'm kind of just like playing matchups with them. Uh, I have Lev Bell and uh, Damian Williams, who's been hurt as my running backs. Uh, I also have Miles Sanders, who I've kind of been throwing in um, as my, as kind of my primary running backs. Uh, not, not, not really too much backing them up. And then I, like, I'm, I'm, I was hoping to be carried by my by my wide receivers three wide receivers it's standard scoring it's not PPR but um, I swung a trade and I got DeAndre Hopkins for uh, for Cooper Cup and uh, and Matt Breida so I have I have Hopkins I have OBJ and I have Brandon Cooks and the reason why I traded Cup away was because you know he's been balling out the first few games um, I had him and Cooks. I think Cooks is the better is the better receiver, in, especially in a standard, whereas Cup's more of like a a PPR guy. He has been scoring a lot of touchdowns with Goff, though. So, um, but overall, as far as his profile goes, I, I feel Cooks is better, um, and I didn't want to carry both of them on my team. Kind of limits my upside. So I, I wanted to deal one of them away. Coop had, Cup had more trade value. And I mean, I got freaking DeAndre Hopkins. Um, but he, he didn't do crap last week. Um, Cooks did something a little bit. But um, him and OBJ really held me back. Um, I mean, tight end's a dumpster fire for me everywhere. So we won't go into that. And defense doesn't matter. But, you know, with that trio of wide receivers, I figured I'd be in contention every week, but somehow I'm one and three. So, anyway, uh, I'm not sure if anybody else is having similar issues. I feel like it's been a really weird season. There's not too many wide receivers that are producing on a weekly basis, and unless you have um, one of the big running backs like Kamara, McCaffrey, um, Dalvin Cook, and Zeke, I think that covers everybody um, I mean I don't know if you want to throw Chubb in there he's been doing all right but unless you have those backs and have gotten lucky with your receivers I feel like I feel like it's been you know it's been a rough year for for everybody as far as predictability goes as the season goes along we'll have a better understanding of who we can expect regular production out of I know it's kind of a common occurrence every year we say oh this year's weird this year's this year's wild nothing makes sense um, or every year it's like oh so many injuries you know um, I do feel like we haven't really talked about there being a lot of injuries this year so I'm sure they'll crop up um, but it hasn't been too wild on that front but um, I will say the production and consistency or lack thereof I think is pretty unique to this year um, I would say it's been more inconsistent and less predictable than the average so there is a lukewarm take for you guys to analyze and to consider 
if your team, like mine, isn't doing, isn't living up to your expectations. So, got to make adjustments, got to make those trade offers, um, got to gotta go for those dubs. All right, let's get into it. Again, I'm crunch for time, like always. I got to get this done in like 15 minutes so I can go back, heat up my lunch, eat at my desk, deal with all the bullshit that I have to deal with now being a supervisor. Um, so, so let's just get into it and hope the quality from our, from our, we're back in the old studios today. I don't know if you noticed, both of you who may or may not have watched, uh, haven't checked the view count, didn't get any comments about the video getting cut short. Um, but yeah, it wasn't supposed to stop where it did last last week I recorded or I thought I recorded like 10 minutes more but when I stopped checked my phone it wasn't on there so uh, sorry if your matchup got cut off uh, you know we got the production team working on that um, made some changes um, rolled some heads hopefully this year you'll be back to the same um, just above replacement level quality that you've become accustomed to all right, first matchup, uh, we'll get straight into it. Me versus Anthony. You know, up until recently, I had been undefeated against Anthony in pretty much all contests. He's got me a few times now. I'd say, you know, it's it's been about 500 the last two or three years now. Um, I mean, he may even have the upper hand on me at this point. Um, I guess that's just regression. It has nothing to do with him being a better fantasy player than me. It's just numbers. As sample size sample sizes grow um, you're gonna get some of those um, it's gonna it's gonna regress to, to, to average you know so uh, <laughs> all right so I got I got 26 out of Lamar Jackson decent day he had been putting up 30 plus so um, I believe he's still the QB one so I'll take it but uh, 26 that day oh David Johnson I omitted him from the list he's been pretty good um, for my RB ones uh, I believe he has he has like more production as a or more points as a receiver only than a bunch of big names I think like even Devonte Adams I mean he had a big week this week which we'll talk about but um, but he hasn't done much over the course of the season uh, I think David Johnson has more PPR points just as a receiver. Um, as like OBJ, DeAndre Hopkins, like a bunch of big names. But um, obviously he's not hes not on the Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara level right now. But um, but yeah, I'm still happy with that, that first round pick. I'm talking too much about my team like I always do. Maybe I should start with you guys. Give you more incentive to, uh, to tune in. I got six out of Philip Lindsay, really disappointing. Uh, nine out of Keenan Allen. I think he's still the, the wide receiver one. He's leading the league in receiving yards, but was hoping for more. Um, I think the Chargers were targeting some other lesser names, I think, to put some things on tape for other teams to have to, have to prep for Inman and... Um, I'm trying to think of the other receivers like Travis Benjamin and such. Uh, so that way, when they play better teams, Keenan Allen won't just get shut out. But um, he did have a long, like, 60 yard touchdown called back. It would have been nice. Wouldn't have made a difference, but, um, you know, in the total points, it would have helped. <sighs> Michael Hardman, bagel man of the, of the week, zero points. John Ross, not the truth, injured himself, six points. Jared. Cook, worst pick ever, five points. Jared Goff threw for 500 yards and like three interceptions. Somehow managed only 25 points. Um, might be a little bit, a little bit problematic with Goff moving forward. Chargers D got me 11. I'll take it. Uh, on my bench, Josh Jacobs got me 11. But other than that, you know. No differences really. Wouldn't have made any difference. I might have Tyreek back this week, so hopefully that'll give my squad a little bit of a boost. Oh, and Melvin Gordon back too. Um, glad I didn't start him. He was just in uniform, but didn't get on the field. So 
Uh, for Anthony, he got 20 out of Mahomes. Uh, one of his lower outputs that didn't throw for a touchdown. Gotta like that, though, if you're Anthony. Still getting 20 out of Mahomes in probably his worst-case scenario. Aaron Jones somehow is becoming a regular producer. 17 points. Kerryon Johnson, 16. Devontae Adams put me in a hole early. He got 29 on Thursday night before getting hurt. I think he had like 160 yards and no touchdowns in the first half or something. And he got 29 points with no touchdowns. That was It was an impressive night for him. Kenny Gallaudet got 23. Cooper Cup, 28. Austin Hooper, seems like he puts up numbers every week. Uh, 23 points. Only got 9 at a DAC. And the Packers D got minus 1. No real standouts on Anthony's bench. I'm done with this matchup. I don't know about you guys. Congrats, Anthony. Enjoy your win. Takes me down 164 to 109. Next up, we have Jess versus Jeff. Stop, she's already dead. Jess, 29 out of Rogers, 8 out of Ingram, 6 out of Sonny Michelle, 16 out of Diggs, 16 out of Emmanuel Sanders, 11 out of John Brown, 15 out of Kelsey, 16 out of Russ, 2 out of Jacksonville's D, left 25 points on the bench with Jarvis Landry and 17 for Devonta Freeman. Maybe Freeman can be a little bit regular of a producer for Jess. Um, you know, I mean, there's some not bad days in here. It's just Ingram and Michelle didn't do anything this week. So, and nobody really blew, none of, none of her receivers really blew up and uh, helped out too much. So, uh, 119's a respectable score. But I say in most weeks, that's, uh, that's below the average for the mixer. Jeff, on the other hand, continues to roll. He got 18 out of Kyler Murray. Christian McCaffrey's really anchoring Jeff's team. He got 33 out of him. Dalvin Cook, another nice day, 18 points. Chris Godwin somehow continues to be relevant. 42 points. Tyler Lockett got 9. Christian Kirk got 7. Vernon Davis got 1. Eckler got 29 in the Superflex spot. Uh, which we'll see if Jeff continues to roll with that strategy now that Melvin's back. 25 points out of the Patriots D again, really. Uh, Jeff's got a, you know, Jeff's got a kind of a shit pumping unit right now. He just keeps rolling through everybody. Uh, 182 to 119. Can Jeff keep up this pace? We'll see. Next up, Mason versus Sean. A rematch of last year's championship, right? So we got, for Mason, you got 14 out of Daniel Jones, 10 out of Joe Mixon, 39 out of Chubb, 7 out of DeAndre, uh, 9 out of Amari Cooper, 10 out of Marvin Jones, 2 out of Greg Olson, 25 out of Stafford, who seems to be fixed. Would have been nice last year. Uh, Bears got him 16 for his defense. No huge standouts on his bench. Mason totals 132. Sean, some disappointments on here. Four to Andy Dalton. Only 11 out of Kamara. Three out of Mack. He did get 18 out of Mike Evans. Uh, I believe the Bucks are still putting up points from that game somehow. Uh, Sean McVay offensive genius, but um, their defense for the Rams have been pretty good. Not sure what's going on with the Rams. The pressure of being uh, the only team representing LA may be too much for the Rams. Cortland Sutton got 24. Sammy Watkins, 6. Sackerts, 13. Javis Winston, 33. Three points from Vikings D. Somehow that only totals the 115, probably because Andy Dalton didn't do very well. Disappointing. Sean left Gurley on the bench. I mean, he hadn't been doing well, but, um, you know, that's rough. That's rough. He left 22 on the, 22 on the bench there. If he would have started him, yep, that would have been enough. 
Uh, similarly, Robert Woods left on the bench. Um, I mean, who he started over Robert Woods was probably Cort Cortland Sutton, who scored 24. So it's not it's not a terrible terrible difference there. But um, you know, those are the things that you look back in your lineup and you're, or back on your bench, um, looking at the box score, and you're like, why? So Sean lost. Uh, 132 for Mason, 115 for Sean. Next up, we got Zach versus Danny. Danny. Thanks for I mean, shouts to you guys who change your team names every week. It's not hard for me at all. Uh, Deshaun, Jots, De uh, Deshaun Watson, 13 points. Zeke, 16. James Conner, 26. Cooks, 13. Boyd, 6. DJ Moore, 7. Uh, Will Disley, who Jeff, <laughs> we gave him shit for takings, but been one of the surprises this year. He got 18 points. Uh, I believe Arizona is still giving up points to, to tight ends as we speak. Uh, Carson Wentz got 21. Ravens D got zero. Total of 120 for Zach, my opponent this week. And Danny, another rough week. Tom Brady got five. Uh, Wayne Gallman, 27. Uh, gotta like that pickup. Daryl Williams got 18. Julian Edelman, 7. Alshon Jeffrey, 12. You know, I don't know why. I think, how much did Wayne Gallman, Fab did Wayne Gallman go for? Like 150 or something? I feel like he should have been a $300 player at least. So, um, not as much price enforcement as uh, I would have liked to see there from the rest of the league. I know some of you guys need running backs. That's the one thing I actually got on my team, but uh, I can only start two, and they're not putting up 30 points every week. So I got like five RB2s. Um, Jason Witten got seven. Where did I leave off? Paul Richardson, four. Alshon Jeffrey, 12. Phillip Rivers got 23. Rams got him five. A lot of, a lot of nothing on his defense. Oh, it's because everybody's hurt. Uh... I mean, have fun with your with your matchups in uh, bye weeks, Danny. Danny goes down to Zach, 120 to 108. Last matchup, Jake versus Matt. Mason got Mason Rudolph, 19 points. Chris Carson, 19, 19 as well. David Montgomery, 9. Michael Thomas, 18. Uh, and then a whole lot of nothing. OBJ, four. Thielen, two. Evan Ingram got him nine. Case Keenum, somehow as a quarterback in this league, got him minus one. <sighs> CXD got him 16. But just not a good day for Jake. Doesn't break 100. 95 points for Jake. Um, I mean, you just... You, you hate to see Matt get easy wins. Gardner Minshew got Matt, 18. Leonard Fournette, 28. Derek Henry, 12. Julio, 9. Juju, 4. Larry, 9. Darren Waller, 12. Brissett, 24. Brown D got him, 10. Not much going on in Matt's bench. 126 total for Matt. Um, I'd say that 120 to 135 range is kind of the average for the league each week. Luckily for Matt, he faced the lowest score. So, uh, so Matt takes this one, 126 to 130, or one. I was looking at the 126 to 95. Anyway, so that is week four. I mean, we're at the quarter pole in the season. We're probably at the one third mark for regular season for fantasy. The top six that qualify for the playoffs get in. Four are out. Jess looks to be securing one of those four spots. Um, maybe Sean as well. Um, I mean, I'm there. I'm in the. I'm in the on the bubble for the playoff spot. Uh, maybe we'll do contenders versus pretenders next week if I actually have time to prepare. Spoiler alert: I won't. 
<laughs> so get used to the same quality. Um, we'll see. Maybe I'll look at the standings. I'll print the standings and uh, and have some sort of discussion with that. But yeah, that I mean that's all I got for you guys this week. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed the flyover last week. Uh, it wasn't in the budget for this week, so um, you know, tell me about it in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that crap. Let's get famous. Maybe I'll be on The Masked Singer or something. I don't know. All right, that's all I got. Let's get out of here. See you guys.